Hey everybody, welcome back to One Mic, where I watch shit so you don't have to. And today I'm here to talk about Season 4, Episode 6 of HBO's Westworld, entitled Fidelity. Before I even get started, I want to read the episode description because I feel like this is the first time where the episode description in concert with the title actually went too far and gave too much info. They informed on the episode a little bit too much to where it actually took away... I don't want to say the enjoyment because I thoroughly enjoy the episode, but it actually took away what I think should have been a little bit more uh, revealing of a moment. Well, two moments, actually. Uh, uh, and informed on some of the bigger moments, I think a little bit too much. And that didn't take away from my enjoyment, but it did allow me to kind of see these twists coming. And it got a, it was a little bit predictable for me at points. But I, I don't hold that against the show just because few people are looking at the titles and the descriptions to the degree that I am. So if you just start up Westworld or you're or not even on HBO Max, like if you just watch on Westworld on HBO, you're not getting that shit. So you're probably not even think about it. But uh, the episode description said to thine own selves be true. Um, well, this was uh, a pretty obvious one to me to start because I already know the phrase to be to thine own self be true, like be be true to yourself. So when it says to thine own selves be true, I thought, okay, someone's going to have to be true to multiple versions of themselves, maybe? Well, this was my takeaway, right? So um, I'm thinking about that already going into the episode because I'm reading the episode description before I hit play on HBO Max. But uh, the title essentially refers to the Caleb plotline of this episode. And we really only spend, place, spend time in two places, uh, with Caleb and with Bernard slash... Frankie slash C, whatever you want to call her. I don't even really know what I'm going to call her. I'm going to call her whatever name pops into my head at that time. <laughs> but um, this episode picks up with the Caleb plotline from where we last saw him, which was probably like two episodes ago, after Hale uh, reveals that he's been a host and all this good stuff. And she wants to know uh, what he has that she doesn't because she's thinking that Caleb knows something about why she wasn't able to control him. Uh, apparently he was the first host to I mean, i'm sorry yeah the, wait he was the first person to show uh resistance to the control and they've seen it ever since so they're like okay what is it what do you know about yourself that allows these outliers to have some sort of control over the host to where um not only are they not uh uh can, not only can they not be controlled but they also have some sort of ability to make the host kill themselves so this is what hale believes and she believes that Caleb knows something about why this is happening. So uh, this picks up after that. And this is, again, the first moment where I come to the realization that a little bit too much was given away in that title and that uh, and that episode description. Because um, we begin this thing with Caleb's storyline where he is essentially following uh, the footsteps of previously failed iterations of himself who have tried to escape and they've left clues and um i don't know at, at first i thought they were intentional then i thought they were unintentional now i think they're intentional again because the first time i watched it i missed the arrow that points toward the grate in the floor in the room that he was in so the arrow obviously the arrow is very clearly a intentional placement and then uh, you see the the various handprints, the the dirt one, the blood one. I figured those could be unintentional because I hadn't seen. Uh, I, I don't know. I must have been looking away uh, at the moment where the arrow points to the grate. So uh, that that makes it very clear that it's intentional. But regardless, uh, these the the own selves be true description refers to this and how Caleb has to put faith in the previous versions of himself to kind of lead him out of here. But then when you couple that with the episode title Fidelity. Already at the very beginning of this episode, well, at the very beginning of this Caleb sequence where he, he starts to escape and he's finding these clues, it immediately pops into my head because the episode title is Fidelity, that this is all part of Hale's plan. <laughs> and sure enough, that's that's what ended up happening. Um, But I did, I do want to say, where did my mouse go? Okay, there it goes. I do want to say, though, that even though I knew or it occurred to me fairly early as a possibility that 
uh, everything that Caleb was doing was being orchestrated by Hale and was part of her plan, it didn't take away from my enjoyment of those scenes. I thought those scenes were really cool. Um, I enjoyed watching the game of him, you know, finding these clues. I particularly enjoyed the uh, the duct scene when he opens the grate next to the 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 assumed dead version of himself that's by the great door and sees that a couple other versions of him have tried and failed to jump out. And I, I, I love that because I'm like, okay, well, why don't you just keep going? But he tries to jump out and uh, the one that we thought was dead saves him and says, use me. I thought that was cool. So I really liked the duck, duck scene. And I enjoyed, I enjoyed going on that ride, even though I, I felt like I had a pretty good idea of where it was going to end up. And it does end up where I thought it was going to end up. Uh, he does escape. He leaves a message for Frankie, which uh, ties back to uh, previous scenes of her leaving messages for him. Uh, and he leaves a message for her, which she partially hears. And uh, before Hale confronts him, and she basically, he says that he has no control over the hosts and that the hosts are just trying to escape from her. And that's why they're doing this. I I don't know how I feel about that. When I say I don't know how I feel about it, I don't know how much I believe it. I don't know if there isn't... It just seems weird that certain people seem invulnerable to the flies and that when hosts go after those people, they then kill themselves. Like, it seems a little bit... I don't know, it seems like it should be more than just uh, they want to get away from you. But I don't really have an alternative either. Like, I, I can't figure out why outliers would exist or why they can infect other people. And the only thing I can think of, because this is a theme that uh, plays consistently. Well, actually, I'm going to hold that because I want to talk about this theme uh, a little bit later. So I'm going to put a put a pin in that and I'm going to talk about that later, especially since I didn't really plan on talking about what I think, uh, <laughs> what I think about what Caleb said to Hale. I don't really know how I feel. Well, I know how I feel. I don't mind it, but I don't really have an idea, an idea or a theory as to what Caleb or other outliers might be doing that impacts the host. But well, I kind of have one, but it's only one that just popped in my head just now, but I'm going to save it. So, um, all right. Yeah. So I'm ready to talk about the other half of the episode, which focuses on Bernard. Uh, it picks up again where we left off with, uh, Bernard, after they discovered Maeve in the in the sand, now Bernard wants to bring Maeve back to life, and that's essentially where we end up, uh, where we start, I should say, this episode, uh, with that storyline, I should say. I'm, I'm like all tripping all over myself here. That's where we start the Bernard storyline in this episode. There we go. Um, first thing to note here is that uh, Frankie and her team's base is the now. Uh, defunct temperance and I, is it me or is that a really stupid place to put your base why would you put your base at an old park like if i were hail and i'm looking for frankie i'm like i gotta find caleb's daughter she's out there somewhere as an outlier she's probably building up a team of rebels to attack the death star like i'm, I'm where am i gonna go look for frankie first the old defunct park <laughs> that no one has been at for 30 years that's where i'm gonna go so that seems like a really dumb place to hide. But for plot purposes, it did help Bernard because he was able to successfully navigate this park due to it being set up essentially the same as Westworld where he worked at. And uh, <laughs> um, it allows him to, to do what he needs to do in order to, to fix Maeve. So it, it, it really just serves plot purposes. But man, I wish they had thought of so because I'm just like, is this temperance? That's a dumb fucking place to put your hideout if you're trying to hide from uh, Hale slash Dolores. You're going to hide in an old park? Like, that? literally, that'd be the first place I would look. But <laughs> neither here nor there. Um, uh, so during this time, we learned that uh, Temperate, well, Westworld had used the hats to gather the data from the guests, which we knew. But we learned here the Temperates had been using the mirrors. And this scene... Again, it seemed pretty obvious to me that Bernard scanned uh, Frankie in that scene. So when they later reveal that Bernard scanned Frankie in that scene, I went, no shit. Like, it was kind of obvious. So a little sloppy, I think, on their part to have him open the mirror, have it do the scan thing where it goes, like, across her body. Like, I'm like, 
And he's like, and then he takes a thing out and is like, oh yeah, this is just something that's gonna help me with, Ma with Maeve. I'm like, it scanned her and then you took something out that looked like an SD card. What the f <laughs> Like, how am I, and you just said that this is how they're using it to get guest data. Why would I think, why would I believe whatever it is that, whatever explanation he gave about using that to help Maeve, that immediately came off to me like he just scanned Frankie and it's now has her data on this SD card. But I don't write this shit, man. I'm not a writer. Uh, <laughs> but um, let's see. So uh, Jay and his crew return to... Uh, in temperance that's a cigar i like they return they return to temperance and uh oh and they return from the uh well they return from getting out the outlier which we saw last week but um that reminded me to talk about the cold open of this episode which i thought was really fucking cool it's a flashback to frankie as her kid as a kid and, and her mother kind of seemingly recruiting Jay to be part of their rebellion. And uh, there's a great scene where uh, they, they get discovered as, as, as there's potential breachers. And the Prometheus guys, I call them Prometheus guys because they look like the engineers and Prometheus, the engineer and Prometheus. The Prometheus guys show up and they freeze all of the ro fly controlled humans. And Frankie and her crew have to pretend like they're frozen as well. And there's there's a and I love how they have the Prometheus guys just like get right in their face and you can't blink you can't move and we don't know that they can't blink until it happens but we don't know what they can't do but they're being perfectly still Prometheus guy is all in their face the one guy blinks to stop a fly and uh, yeah that gives it away but like I thought that scene was super intense super cool and just talking about like in an overall sense I think this season has done a great job of. Uh, suspense like they like the 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 music that they play for uh when the flies are being activated to you know to control the humans that not music but that that sound that deep tone that they play from the tower that shit's super fucking creepy the prometheus guys are super fucking creepy like i, I feel like this season has incorporated suspense in a way that the previous three seasons didn't and i think that's really really helped the show like at this point with two episodes left it's a toss-up right now like i i can see a final two episodes where once that's over i go that was the best season of westworld better than season one i wouldn't go that far right now but i'm like this close like they stick this landing this could be better than season one and it's because of that like the because of the uh the 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 way they've incorporated tension the way they've uh i don't want to say simplify the story because it's not simple but they've simplified is the best word because it was so needlessly complex before and they made it something that's not easy to follow but not an arduous fucking chore to follow either so like I, I I I really respect what they did in that opening scene. I thought that was really cool. And and talking about Jay and his crew returning from a mission reminded me about that cold open because I thought that cold open was really fucking sick. Um, but like I said, they actually returned from getting this uh, outlier out, and Jay and his crew are like, "Yo, they came up on us so fast. There must have been a mole." And she shoots Bernard and reveals that Bernard stole the data, you know, scanned her data and he scanned everybody's data. And I'm like, no shit, he scanned your data. That was real fucking obvious <laughs> in the scene. But then Stubbs is like, yo, what the fuck? And he's like, trust me. So he doesn't hide that he was doing that, which again brings about the question. Now, what was he doing that for? Um, is there some sort of plan that Bernard has that relies on copies of Frankie and her team to be successful. I mean, we'll see, but um I thought that was an interesting thing to 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 put out there, the fact that he doesn't deny it at all. He's like, "Yo, you just got to trust me, man. I got this." Which when saying trust me and is essentially saying I admit that I secretly stole their data and I'm also not going to tell you why I did it. <laughs> like in that situation, that puts Bernard in danger and he did it anyway. So that lets me know there's got to be some sort of important uh goal here with the uh crew's data which furthermore makes me wonder if the remaining members of the crew will willingly give their data to bernard in the next episode now that we know uh what happens with jay but um 
Bernard later tells C that there's an actual mole. Um, and this is the second obvious part of the of this of this episode to me because you know he's like there's there's an actual mole you need to find out who that person is uh before they kill you and i go well it's got to be jay because if it's not jay what was the point of the cold open where they recruited jay like like that has to be put there for some sort of relevance like a, a tie-in a, a a callback some sort of reason to have this throwback scene where they're like extracting jay from the same situation that they would later end up extracting, what's her name, Lindsay, this 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 outlier, that it has to be a purpose. So when he said like, hey, there's an actual mole, you got to figure out who it is. I was like, well, it's got to be Jay, right? <laughs> and sure enough, it's Jay. And there's another scene too where uh, she's sitting in like on like some stairs, and he's in a in, in an entryway, and he's like, yeah, we got to find this mole. It could be that person. It could be that person. He deflects to everyone with everyone but him. I'm like, okay, it's obviously fucking jay right <laughs> and um and and sure enough he gives himself away by mentioning her as family and that is a callback to the opening scene when frankie tries to position herself as like a, a, a sister to him and he says you know i i'm not trying to have any other sisters i had a real brother he ain't there no more and furthermore yo daddy did it ain't no point to leave it that message oh <laughs> uh, that was really fucking petty and pointless and kind of a dick move but um either way that was the callback, and it did reference that that moment, and that's when we revealed that Jay is the Jay is the mole, and even worse, like I already thought he was a dick in the opening sequence, which had to have been say twenty five years ago. <laughs> Not only that, he shoots the radio in the middle of Caleb's message, so she doesn't even get to hear her dad's full message before he shoots. I'm like, this guy's a fucking asshole, man. I've always hated Jay though. Jay immediately, Jay came off like a dick when he first showed up in whatever episode that was when he first showed up. But um, yeah, that's really all I got to cover in this episode. Even though there were moments that were predictable, I think, I really enjoyed the ride. I love, love, love the direction this is going. I'm super invested at this point in what's going to happen. Like, I, again, I can't speak highly enough of this season. I, I think this season is is great. I think it's it's... It has the ability to become better than season one, and I, I don't, I'm thoroughly enjoying it. I'm glad, like Westworld's back, man. This season, like this season, can't fail. Like I have no reason to believe that there's even a possibility that these final two episodes are gonna not work for me. Like they've they've built this up. I love the way it's been paced. I love the way they they've moved back and forth with time. It seems like they've learned from the perceived failures of season three. In season two to a lesser degree and they've incorporated that and they've come out with a season that not only is is well put together uh it moves at a good pace it's thoroughly interesting and intriguing but it also it, it it doesn't make you feel like you have to work extremely fucking hard but it's still a really really smart show that does make you work and that that finding that balance i think was was the first thing that needed to happen. And I think they've done it really well. And they've also managed to, um, oh shit, I had another point now. I just lost it. Uh, talking about the balance of like the confusion and, and, and telling a story that still makes you work. There was something else that they're doing this season that I think is really good. Uh, maybe it'll come up, come back to me while I keep talking. Cause I do want to, I do want to wrap up with a few thoughts. Um, the first is that, um, the flashbacks of Caleb and Frankie walking through like the tall grass with like the yellowish grayish kind of filter through the field. Uh, I think it's very clearly meant to at least visually call back to Maeve and her daughter walking through grass, which they really wore that visual out. And I think it was season one or two. They wore that shit the fuck out. I think it was season two. Uh, and I think it's meant to call back to that. But then also I love that thematically, the two things mirror each other as well because they both use their daughters for motivation. Like, like that was always May's motivation, wherever she, whether she wanted to get out of the park, where she wanted to come back in the park, the motivation was always find my daughter. And I think we've kind of forgotten about that with May, but that was May's thing was, was that finding the daughter. And now that's Caleb's thing. And I, I love how they've kind of mirrored those things both visually and thematically. Um, I loved Caleb's line when he asked uh, 
when Hale asked him how he was infecting the host and and he, and this is back when he's still kind of like locked up in that one room where he was surrounded with the other rooms that had the previous versions of him before his whole mission to his own selves had started. And, you know, she's like, uh, you know, how are you doing this? He says, like, he, he was like, I, I don't remember what I said because she refers to him saying that um, that he had something she didn't. And he's like, oh, I don't remember. And she presses it more. And he's like, uh, let me read the quote. Maybe you'll have better luck with the next guy. I thought that was a really fucking badass line. That was pretty cool. And, and Aaron Paul delivered it very Jesse Pinkmanly. <laughs> Speaking of Jesse Pinkman, uh, I, I think he's going to be on Better Call Saul tonight. I love the fact that I'm going to get like this weird back-to-back -back awesomeness from Aaron Paul, like a great Caleb episode, and then possibly Jesse Pinkman tonight on back-to-back -back nights. I think that's really cool. Um... <clears throat> Hale burns, after all of this is over, Hale burns the other Caleb's that were still alive. And I remember thinking at this moment, I'm like, is this the end of Caleb's story? Because I'm like, there's really no use for him after this. He already is serving as motivation for Frankie and Maeve. He now feels like he's gotten a message out to Frankie. He's gotten out. He's discovered Hale's plan. She kills the 278th version of him right there on that roof. I'm like, do we even really need Caleb anymore? And sure enough, then she goes and burns the versions of him that are still around. And I'm like, okay, well, I guess that's it for Caleb. But then she makes the 279th version. What do you guys think that's for? I, I think that's interesting to discuss in the comments. What what is she, what does she have planned for the new Caleb? Because there, it's not going to be the same thing. She doesn't need a 279th version to go through this whole charade and end up on this roof and hope that the 279th version is going to tell her something different. That is over. So what is she going to do with number 279? I guess we'll see. Um, I don't remember the last thing that I thought this season was doing really well. So um, I guess I'm going to wrap this up. I'm going to try really hard to think of it in these last seconds. And if I don't, um, I'll let it go. And if I think of it and it's important, I'll put it, I'll pin it as a comment. But yeah, it had to do with me talking about how uh, this season, I think, has, has taken the advice of the listeners and not the advice, but has, has looked at what we've been critical about and changed it. Ah, now I remember. They've somehow managed to take a show that people on Reddit and, and big fans obsess over and always try to guess and figure shit out. And I don't get on Reddit for that kind of thing. I don't want to potentially have it spoiled by someone who actually knows what's going to happen and is pretending like they're guessing. So I don't know, maybe the, the, the ultimate reveal of this season like the the the, the crux of, of 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 what is happening has been figured out on reddit but i don't think it has i feel like this show is still surprising people and i think that's impressive when there is a subset of people whose entire goal is to figure you out and you and whoever else is writing this season with you you know it's probably jonah nolan lisa joy but then others as well in the writing room have somehow managed to come up with something where, you know, I figured out things, little things, step by step, but I have no clue where this is going with two episodes left. And I feel like, by and large, the internet collectively doesn't either. And I think they've done a great job of not just planning out a great story, but planning out a great story and tailoring it, tailoring it in a way where we can't figure out the goal and the end game. And I think that's really good. Um, so yeah, like I said, this one's on the, this season, I think they, they, they knock out these final two episodes in impressive fashion and, and stick the landing on this season. I could see myself putting this as the best Westworld season. And I think regardless of what happens in these final two episodes, I'm not gonna say regardless, it could, it, you know, if it, if, if the last two seasons of this, I mean, the last two episodes of this are like the last two episodes of like Game of Thrones, then it probably then what I'm about to say won't apply. But I don't think there's any way these final two episodes are going to prevent me from putting this season of Westworld on my top 10 list for the year. So uh, we'll see. I will see you guys next week for the penultimate episode. Until then, peace.